Let's take a look at a conjunction fallacy. A and B occurring at the same time is a conjunction. You commit the conjunction fallacy when you overestimate this probability. A common example is project planning. Imagine you have a project that contains 12 critical tasks, and that the probability of each of these tasks coming in on time is 95% or 0.95. The probability that the project will be completed on time is often overestimated. We can calculate the true probability as follows. The probability that a project comes in on time is the probability that the first task is on time and the second task and the third task and the fourth and so on. So using the AND rule, we have to multiply these probabilities. So this becomes the probability that the first one is on time multiplied by the probability of the second one and so on. So we can substitute in our 0 0.95. We end up with 0 0.95 times itself 12 times or we can think of it as 0 0.95 to the power 12. Well, we know when we multiply decimals with each other, they quickly become smaller. And in this case, the probability the project comes in on time is 54%, when in fact, lots of people will look at, well, the probability of any one coming in on time is 95%, so they assume that the project will be on time 95%. Well, that's the conjunction fallacy. And in fact, this happens so often in planning they call it the planning fallacy, and it's the mistake of overestimating the probability the plan will become uh, will come in on time. What they fail to realize, in order for the plan to come in on time, the first piece has to be in place on time and on budget, the second piece has to be placed on time and on budget, and so on. And quickly that probability reduces to something quite small. Now let's look at a disjunction fallacy. A or B occurring at the same time is a disjunction. You commit the disjunction fallacy when you underestimate the probability of a disjunction. Let's take a look at the uh, birthday sharing example. So suppose there's 30 students in our behavioral economics class. What is the probability that at least two students have the same birthday? Now, many people think this probability is tiny. So let's look at it. To make things simpler, let's assume that every student was born in the same uh, non-leap year and that birthdays are randomly distributed throughout the year. So the probability of any one month is going to be the same. And then it's best to think of this first as what's the probability that nobody shares a birthday? Then we can use the not rule. So the probability that nobody shares a birthday is going to be the probability of the first person having a birthday. So that's going to be 365 of 365 because they could have it on any day multiplied by the probability that the next person doesn't share that same birthday. So they could be born on 364 days of the 365. And then the third person, they could be born on 363 days. Those are the remaining days that they could be born on so they don't share a birthday with the first two. And so we can continue this process. What we end up finding then is that the probability that nobody shares a birthday is 29.4%. Now what we can do is determine, well, what's the probability that at least two people share a birthday is going to be 1 minus the probability that nobody shares a birthday, and that's 0 0.294. So this equals 0 0.706, which is 70.6%. So if you thought the probability was much lower, you just committed this, dis this uh, disjunction fallacy. Right? What we failed to take into account or understand was all the possible combinations. So think of it this way. The first and second classmates could share a birthday, or the first and second, or the first and third, and so on, all the way through 30 people. And then it could be the second and third person, and second and fourth person, and so on. And so we have all of these or possibilities, and with or possibilities, we end up having to add them together. And so often we underestimate the probability of a disjunction.